You know, it happens every time. You get a new phone and it's blazing fast for a while, but eventually, for some reasons that we're gonna fix in this video, it starts to slow down. Apps take longer to open and close, the phone may lag behind when you're swiping, or it might just not be very responsive in general. Well, the good news is that most, if not all of these issues can be fixed with some surprisingly simple tips and get your phone up and running almost like new which is the whole point of this video. Before we jump in, I wanna give a big thanks to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or an online store, you can make your next move with Squarespace. Squarespace has 16 brand new designer website templates and an all-in-one platform, so you're not gonna to have to ever worry about installing or upgrading anything, making it easy to, say, create an online store where you can even manage inventory and orders. Of course, if you want, you can also set up or transfer your domain through Squarespace and take advantage of their 24-7 customer service. You can start your free trial today at squarespace.com or go to squarespace.com slash to get 10% off your first order. And that link, of course, will be in the description. So, without further ado, let's get your phone working like new. Starting off with number one, this might seem obvious, but really it's the most important. So when was the last time you went through and deleted all your unused apps just sitting on your phone? You might think that they aren't really doing any harm just sitting there, but they are. Every app is just one more thing taking up space, possibly reducing the speed of the flash memory ever so slightly. And one more thing, your phone has to check for updates and install new updates from the Play Store, using up more bandwidth and resources every time it does that. And even if you aren't using certain apps, they may still be taking up background resources without you knowing. So if you've been meaning to get around to cleaning out old apps, maybe you'll see that now would be a good time. Next, quickly, this one is basically an extension of the first tip, and that is to remove any bloatware that came pre-installed with your phone. The reason I separated this out is because bloatware usually makes it harder to uninstall, so you might have thought that you couldn't install certain apps. So if you see any pre-installed bloatware that doesn't have the option to uninstall when you click and drag it, this is what you do. Go to the settings, then apps, select the troublesome one, and here you should hopefully see the option to disable it or something similar, and that should do the trick. On rare occasions, there are apps that you just can't get rid of no matter what that came pre-installed, but for most of them, you should at least be able to disable it. Next up, the real tip number two, we wanna figure out where all your space went on your phone and free that up too. So go to your settings, then storage, and this should tell you how much of your phone space is being taken up and by what. If it's images and video, maybe back them up elsewhere and clear those out, and if it's apps, you can actually click on that again and it will show you specifically which apps are taking up the most space. You can sort the order to be most space. And it might make you realize that maybe you don't use some of those huge apps enough to keep them installed, it's not worth it. And further, clicking on an app in here will tell you how much data is being taken up by the app itself, the data it's stored, and its cache. You can usually clear the cache to free up a bunch of space and that's just temporary files the app saves, but they can accumulate over time. I recently cleared out all my cache data, so it doesn't look like much here, but yours might be pretty big. Just be careful though when deleting the app data, you might not wanna always do that because that will basically make the app as if you just downloaded it, erasing any login info, settings, or data you've saved within it. Or finally, back in the storage menu, you can go to the cache data thing here and clear that all out for every app at once. Again, I cleared mine out so it doesn't look like much, but before it was like seven gigabytes of cached files, so it could be pretty big. Okay, moving on. This next one is much simpler than the previous ones, and that is to consider cutting down on how many widgets you have on your home screen. They're obviously useful, but if you have a ton of them, it could be taking up lots of resources even when you're just at the home screen, almost as if each app is running simultaneously all the time, even though it's not really how it works, you get the idea. So at least give it a shot, try removing some widgets, especially ones that dynamically update, and see if it makes a difference at all. I imagine it would especially probably help on older phones with less RAM. 
All right, number four, we want to investigate which apps use the most resources by looking at battery usage. Because if you think about it, the more battery an app uses, probably the more resource it uses, even though it might not be a direct correlation. Anyway, go to the settings, then battery, and here you'll see something, you've probably seen this before, it'll show you which apps are the worst culprits. Now you have to consider some things here because obviously some might just be using more battery because you use it more often. So check to see if there are any apps that seem to be using much more battery than you think that they should based on how much you're using it and you can use your best judgment on that. Once you identify a few, you have a couple options. You don't necessarily have to uninstall it right away. You can try going to that app, poke around in the settings, and see if there's anything you can change that might reduce how much battery it uses. You could try disabling push notifications, for example, or turn off location services for it, or disable some feature that you're not using, or just reduce the frequency of how often it checks for new stuff. Obviously, it's gonna be different for every app, but I think you get the gist of it. Okay, number five, we're gonna to go to disable animation. This may or may not make a big difference, but it should at least make your phone feel a bit faster. And I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, if you don't have the developer options menu enabled, you need to do that. So to do that, you just go to settings, about phone, and then go down to the bottom to build number and tap on that a bunch of times and it will enable the developer options menu. Now go back in the main settings window and go to that new developer options menu near the bottom. Here you'll see a ton of advanced options you need not concern yourself with at the moment, but the ones that we're interested in are the ones that say animation scale, and there should be three of them. This basically changes how fast or slow animations on the phone are, such as the animation when opening and closing apps or switching between menus and here you wanna simply turn them off. I already had them turned off before. Now, when you click to open an app, it will skip the animation and get right to work loading the app. Again, it might not make a major real difference, but things should actually feel a bit faster because the app opens instantly or closes once you press it. Coming near the end, numero six, we're gonna use a really cool feature in the Chrome mobile web browser called Data Saver. You may or may not have heard about this already, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. What you do is go to Chrome, and then go to Settings, and look for where it says Data Saver. Then, obviously, you can click on that and turn it on. What this does is actually has Google compress web pages that you visit before it sends it to your phone. And that way, you can use less bandwidth and presumably it might make websites load a bit faster too because it doesn't have to load as much data in the first place. It won't work on every site such as anything that's encrypted, but that's a good thing because you wouldn't want Google or anyone else for that matter to see your secure connection. And as you can see here, it also shows you how much data you've saved because of using this feature. So I was able to save about 10% of data, not bad I suppose, probably just because a lot of sites use encryption by default. But still, you may as well have it enabled. All right, finally, we have the most important, most useful tip if your phone ever seems to be having issues, which is turn it off and on again. All right, you might think that that one's a given, like come on, but really, it'll close out all apps so when you boot it up, nothing will be running in the background and clear out RAM and all that. It's a good option to try first. Or if you're truly desperate and nothing seems to work at all, you could always do a factory reset of the entire phone, wiping it clean and starting fresh. Obviously, you need to back up first, and this might just be more trouble than it's worth, but it's at least an option as a last resort. Okay, so maybe that last one wasn't very good, so here's a bonus tip that actually could help, which is to disable auto-sync on certain apps. To do this, go to settings and then accounts. And this will show a bunch of different apps that periodically check for updates and sync data for one reason or another. There's an option to disable auto sync altogether for everything, but I wouldn't do that because you definitely want to keep auto sync on for your Google account, for example. But you can go into apps individually and hopefully it should give you the option right there to turn off syncing 
if you don't need it to. For example, I really don't need the GoPro app to sync media of the day, whatever that is, so I'm gonna disable that. Other apps like the Facebook Messenger won't give you the option to turn off syncing, and your best shot there would probably be going into the app itself, and again, looking through the settings to see if there are any options to disable it there. It might not let you disable it at all though, meaning you need to uninstall it altogether to stop it from using any data. But the ones that you can disable might help if you don't need them. So that is it. By now you should have a phone that's a lot faster. And if you like this video, you might like my other video talking about 13 Android settings that you should probably change right now. And you can just click on that right over there. If you want, you can subscribe. I make a few new videos every week and also enable notifications as well, or YouTube probably won't show you the new videos anyway. But regardless, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time and have a good one.